So, you want to live longer and preserve your youthfulness. You want to look 10 or 20 years younger than your real age, and avoid all those terrible diseases of aging. So you know that your longevity and your ability to preserve your youthfulness every single day matter. But for that, you need to target the youthfulness preservation mechanism in your body. One such longevity mechanism is mTOR. mTOR is a special mechanism because it extends 30% of lifespan in all animal forms that we tested so far. It's almost like as guaranteed as you possibly can get in longevity research. And to affect mTOR, today our focus is going to be on protein. We will do a scientific analysis of the impact of protein on longevity. And you're going to see two clips from Dr. Dave Sinclair and one from Dr. Ron Rosedale who has been researching mTOR for over a decade. We're also going to answer the source question. Is plant protein truly better than animal protein? The analysis we're going to do today between plant protein and animal protein is something that you've never seen before. And we are going to do this comparison in a meat-busting way. Uh, sorry, myth busting way. And in this video, you're also going to get a bonus to keep you focused on your longevity and youthfulness goals, so you could use what you discovered today to make a habit out of it. If that's what you're looking for, now we can start. Welcome to the Wellness Messiah podcast. I'm your host, Rimon. mTOR, the target of rapamycin. If the last term is familiar to you, it's because doctors such as Peter Atia has been talking about it as a drug for aging. mTOR is one of the most important genetic pathways that is being controlled by what we eat. And above all nutrients that we eat every day, the nutrient that control mTOR the most is protein. Protein and amino acids which constitute protein are the strongest stimulator to mTOR. When daily consumption of protein is high, then mTOR gets into a party mode. Time to grow and stop repair. That's a recipe for excess growth, aka cysts and cancer, and accelerated aging. Remember, every time your cells divide unnecessarily, you're running the risk of losing a bit of your youthfulness. So protein is like a boost for mTOR, but you don't need mTOR to be high. Got it? However, when protein intake is low, then mTOR keeps its head down, it's being suppressed. Then it begins to do things that preserve your youthfulness, such as recycle bad proteins, go after damaged cells, and activate autophagy. Please note that when you reduce your protein intake, it doesn't mean that your body eats less protein. It just recycles the old protein. This is great. So reducing mTOR actually increases the consumption of protein from bad proteins. Remember, our bodies are survival machines and low mTOR activates this survival mechanisms. So the first step to reduce your mTOR in Christian longevity is avoiding high protein in your diet. Let's put a clip from David Sinclair who speaks about high protein. Um, something else to avoid is super high protein uh, because mTOR, it, it can be activated, but you don't want it activated all the time because it's not going to turn on the autophagy, the defenses to recycle proteins. And this one is going to piss a lot of people off. Well, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of people who believe that carnivore diets are the best for longevity. And for, for, for some people, a lot of aminos are appropriate. Well, certainly if you're an athlete or you want to bulk up, there are short-term gains. You'll feel better if you eat meat. You'll obviously have the protein to build up that muscle. But we can go through the evidence. When you look at populations of what they eat and how long they live, as well as the short-term effects when you eat a high-protein, uh, carnivorous, red meat-based diet. Those changes are, will be good in the short run, but long-term, there's no evidence. In fact, I would say there's counter-evidence to that being beneficial for longevity, if that's your goal. Dr. David Sinclair speaks a lot about the benefits of plant protein, and there is a lot of merit to that. But today, I want to go deeper into what exactly plant pro protein does, and... Don't worry, if you love steaks, I'm going to show you today what you can do to eat steaks and keep the mTOR down. If you're a bit confused about the volume of protein comparing to the source of protein, Dr. Ron Rolsdale, whom studied mTOR for longevity for over a decade, gives his take on the subject. It's from Cancer 2013 Annual International IPT, where he got asked about it at the end. In the China study by T. Colin Campbell, there was a great distinction 
the animal proteins being carcinogenic and the plant proteins uh, not or protective. Would you care to comment? Yeah. You already said you didn't care. <laughs> well, there are, first of all, the China study had so many flaws in it that it's a worthless study. But most of the time when they're eating plant proteins, a lot of it is less digestible. And so they're actually intaking a whole lot less protein. So it's a lower protein diet, which is good. That being said, the most important aspect is how much protein you're eating. Is there a difference in kinds of proteins? Yes, there is. There are certain amino acids that stimulate mTOR more than others. Leucine is the major amino acid that stimulates mTOR. And you'll find more leucine in animal proteins. There are fewer, there is less mTOR stimulating amino acids in plant proteins than there are in animal proteins. But the volume of protein you eat is going to outweigh the kind of protein. So the volume of total protein matters the most, regardless how you're going to get this protein. Here are a few studies to corroborate the impact of high protein diet, regardless of the sources, on your longevity. This study found that people from ages 50 to 65 who ate high protein diets were four times more likely to die from cancer. I'm quoting from this study. Respondents aged 50 to 65 reporting high protein intake had 75% increase in overall mortality and a four-fold increase in cancer death risk during the following 18 years. And if you need more corroboration for that, another study showed that low-protein diet increases longevity. Anti-Atkins low-protein diet extends lifespan in flies. The researcher, the author of the, the study, he said, in flies, we see that the long-lived diet is low-protein diet. And what we have found here is a mechanism for how that may be working. They talk about how they improve the mitochondria function. So let's get back to the basics. Protein is made up by small building blocks called amino acids. There are 21 in total. For my research, about 12 or 13 of these amino acids activate mTOR. So think about it, 12, 13 out of 21. As you can see, there are many amino acids that contribute to activating mTOR. So this is really why the volume of protein is the most important thing here, because it's really tough to stay away from all the amino acids that activate mTOR. I remember many of these amino acids, as I'm going to touch in a minute, also nourish the body. They allow the repair of your tissues, uh, growth of your hair. So it's not like you want to avoid them at all costs. So we need to find a balance between nourishing your body to avoiding activating mTOR. Is there a difference between short-term high protein versus chronic high protein? Yes. When I say in today's video the term high protein, I refer to chronic high protein consumption. Short-term protein can give you certain and achieve certain tactical goals. For example, this study examined the impact of chronic high protein versus short-term high protein. And I'm quoting from the study. High protein diets appear to have beneficial effects on weight loss, body composition, and certain blood lipids, at least in the short term. Longer term intake of high protein diets in humans has been shown to result in whole body insulin resistance. This is important because insulin resistance is associated with increased aging. Also, they say associated with upregulated factors such as mTOR, increased stimulation of insulin, and stimulation of gluconeogenesis, which means the body takes this protein, it makes sugar out of it. This is not good. One of the most interesting anecdotes is from Dr. Atkins, who popularized the Atkins diet. Dr. Atkins achieved amazing results with high protein for weight loss. Not many people know that Dr. Atkins also tried this diet with his cancer patients, and it wasn't successful. And remember, cancer is partially a disease of aging. To summarize, you may see certain benefits from short-term high-protein intake. But for longevity, we want to avoid chronic high-protein. In a weekly schedule, once a week, eating above average or high-protein intake could be okay. So eating once a week high-protein, especially if the day has intense exercise, and the high protein is divided with, within a few meals, then it may even be beneficial. Why? For example, if your body is in deficit from the low protein you provided all week long, it can use the excess protein for the extra day in the week to nourish and maybe repair certain tissues 
that may need this extra amino acids, but you don't get this chronic upregulation of mTOR. It's going to be very targeted for specific tissues. And when you divide protein in those one day a week days, it helps with the utilization of protein to repair tissues and also going to re uh, reduce the amount of blood sugar that is going to come from converting protein into sugar. As we move to comparing different protein sources, let's give an honorary mention to the two patrons of this channel. This is so much fun to have our longevity community who supports one another. The first one is Dr. Gary Dakin, and the second is Robin Green. If you would like to join the party, check the Patreon link in the description. And of course, subscribing for free to this channel is also a huge help. So we spoke about the value of protein, which matters the most. What about the source of protein? To simplify, the amino acids that stimulate mTOR the most are the essential amino acids and L-arginine, which is non-essential. Generally speaking, animal protein have higher amounts of these essential amino acids. Metabolically speaking, because of these reasons, animal products, and apologies for the vegans, are more nourishing too. But eating animal protein in excess is going to stimulate, activate mTOR. But it doesn't mean that you need to avoid them completely. Today I'm going to show you specific food groups and examples how much you can eat without overstimulating mTOR, but still nourish your body. Let's move to the non-essential amino acids I mentioned, which is L-arginine. L-arginine stimulates TOR very powerfully. Now here is the kicker. Where do we get the most amount of L-arginine? from plant-based protein. Most plant-based protein have much higher amounts of L-arginine, usually twice as much, than animal products. But plants are lower than almost all essential amino acids. Here are three studies that talks about L-arginine, because this is important when it comes to, to plant-based protein. This study from 2022 says, in mammals, TOR is especially responsive to levels of essential amino acids leucine and conditionally essential amino acid arginine, Conditionally essential means it's not essential, as I, as I mentioned before. SLC3889, an amino acid transported localized uh, to the membranes of lysosomes, was the first proposed arginine sensor for TOR. So we know that TOR is specifically sensitive to arginine. This is another study. L-arginine supplementation increased the rate of protein synthesis in the phosphorylation of mTOR. These results indicate that L-arginine stimulates protein synthesis by activation of mTOR. This is a third study. L-arginine stimulates the mTOR signaling pathway and protein synthesis in porcine cells. So this clear indication that arginine, which is really common in plant protein, also increase mTOR. And to me, L-arginine is the worst offender because not only it increased mTOR, but it doesn't nourish the body. So you give the body something it doesn't really need yet you get all the negative impact of TOR. L-arginine helps to increase IGF-1, which helps in growing muscle mass, but also reduces longevity. I actually used L-arginine to build 8 pounds of muscles in just 4 weeks in an experiment I show in my intro video to this channel. After that experiment, I saw an immediate upshoot of white hair. So it tells you something. L-arginine is not good for longevity. Dr. David Sinclair also mentioned L-arginine in his book, Lifespan. He first mentioned the dangers of methionine in activating TOR, then he says, I'm quoting, the same is true for arginine and the three branch chain amino acids. I used to consume a lot of whey protein, and when I did this analysis, I realize that I consume way too much leucine, about two to three times, and way too much lysine, and way, way too much valine than what my body has to have. So what it means that even if I eat the correct amount of protein, I expose TOR to too many essential amino acids beyond what I could get away with. So I'm going to activate TOR more than what I really need. So then... It goes to another question, which is, I heard that animal-based protein has more leucine, which is true. 
So what I thought, let's replace the whey protein I used to consume with a protein that has the least amount of leucine. And you know which protein powder has the least amount of leucine? Hemp, hemp protein. So I went to hemp protein and lo and behold, it has a massive amount of L-arginine, which to me is much worse. So even though hemp protein has about a third less essential amino acids, it compensates with having extra arginine. Another advantage of plant source protein, as Rosdell said, is that we extract less protein from them. Your body needs to work harder to get the protein from plant-based protein. In essence, you get less protein for the same amount of food eaten. So in total, you can say that plant protein has lower impact on mTOR, but by no means they are saints. And this is exactly why we need to focus on protein volume first. And only then we want to make sure that we do not eat too many essential amino acids every day within this protein requirement if your goal is longevity. Does it make sense to you so far? Here is a list of six reasons why high protein hurts your longevity. This six reason can help you to stay on course. If I go over those reasons, I also provided a free document with these you can download, the, the link to which you can find in the description. These are the six reasons. High protein diet increases mTOR, which reduces longevity. It prevents low mTOR, which prevents longevity. It increases IGF-1, which accelerates aging. High protein diet also increases insulin, which can contribute to diabetes and aging. High protein diet also stops NAD from recycling, which prevents longevity. High protein diet creates heat, which reduces longevity. Thermogenesis, creating heat, is great for weight loss, but is really bad for longevity. And six, Excess protein in high protein diet turns into sugar. And high blood sugar levels, as you know, hurts your longevity. So you can download this list with a link in the description. So this is part one of protein and longevity. In part two, to be released in a few days, we'll discover how much protein exactly your body needs so you could avoid this high protein intake and still nourish your body and keep your strong muscles intact. You're also gonna get simple guidelines of which protein foods to eat and how much and you'll discover how to eat steak and still keep mTOR low for the day. The video is probably going to call something along the lines of David Sinclair and food analysis, what to eat for longevity. Until next time, stay healthy, stay young, and keep mTOR down.